So today we are going to be testing out 12 games running on the 13 inch MacBook Air with a base M4 chip. So this is the base model M4. So if it runs on a passively cooled MacBook Air with no fans at all, then it's going to run on anything with an M4 chip inside it. And we're going to be testing out huge AAA native ARM games running under Mac OS and also Windows games running through the crossover 25 translation layer. And as always, be aware that this MacBook Air has no fans at all. So it's subject to thermal throttling. If you want to find out more about it, then make sure to check out my other video where I kind of explain that in a little bit more detail. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at the first game. So first up, we have the surprise release of Resident Evil 3. So this was never announced at WWDC or anywhere else that this would be coming to Mac, iPhone and iPad. And one of the big strengths of the Apple ecosystem is that if you buy it on the Mac App Store, you get it on the phone and iPad as well. Although honestly, don't bother playing this with the virtual controls. Get a gamepad or play it on your Mac. Again, like Resident Evil 2 Remake and basically all of the other Resident Evil games available on the Mac now. This port of the game manages to perform fantastically. Here we're running at 1080p on default graphics settings with Metal Effects turned on to quality mode. So there's a little bit of upscaling here. And generally performance is really good considering that this is a passively cooled fanless MacBook Air running quite a demanding AAA game that's been really well optimized for basically every single Apple Silicon chip. Next we're looking at No Man's Sky, the crafting exploration spaceship game. Here we're running the game at 1080p at standard graphics settings with Metal Effects turned on to quality mode. So on the space station, we're getting about 50 or so FPS. When we transition into space, we're getting about 70 to 80 plus FPS. And transitioning down to a planet basically hides the loading screen. And this is where the frame rate drops the most pretty much going down to about 40 or so as it loads in the new kind of planet terrain and all of the creatures and everything. And eventually this smooths out to about 60 or so FPS as we come out of the ship. We start to run at about 60 or 70 FPS. This is a really well optimized game for the Apple Silicon Mac. Next up, we're looking at third person cat game called Stray. So here we're running this at 1080p at high settings. And in order to bring it closer to that 60 FPS mark, I turned down the resolution scale to 60%. So this is being upscaled. In this high speed chase level, we're running at about 55 to 60 plus FPS. So this game doesn't require huge frame rates in order to be enjoyable, but you do want to be as responsive as you can be. And it still manages to look really good even at 60% resolution scale. So next up we're looking at Baldur's Gate 3. So right now there's a performance degradation in patch 7 which should be fixed soon. However if you apply what's basically a CPU processor affinity fix, I'll leave a link to this in the description, then you should get much better average performance as much as 10 to 20 percent faster. So I definitely recommend applying this at least until patch 8 comes out for Mac. So to get even better frame rates I've turned FSR onto quality mode to enable a little bit of upscaling and I've set the graphics settings to low and even in act 3 so this is where the most demanding part of the game is we're not getting that good of frame rate something akin to 25 to 30 fps and because this is a turn-based game it's still playable hopefully performance will get fixed in the next patch next we're looking at prince of persia lost crown a new kind of metroidvania game that's been recently released to the mac app store so this is one of the ubisoft titles which i would say comes under the double a budget kind of genre of game there's a good balance of action as well as platform puzzle solving as well as typical metroid style gameplay here we're able to completely max out the settings so this is running at 1080p ultra and we're capping out the macbook air's 60 hertz display Next, we've loaded up Resident Evil Village. So again, this is one of the highly optimized Resident Evil games on Apple Silicon Mac. And we're able to run this at 1080p default settings with Metal Effects set to quality mode, hitting about 45 to 60 FPS. Now, this is basically the first Resident Evil game to get the native Mac port experience, which is a little bit odd because you probably want to play Resident Evil 7, which is a direct precursor to this game before you play Resident Evil Village. Anyway, this is a very decently performing first person horror game running great on the MacBook Air with the M4 chip. Next up, we're looking at the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. So this is one of those games which is probably perfect for the MacBook Air. We're easily maxing out the settings at 1080p high. It's not particularly demanding. This has been kind of remade ground up using the Unity engine rather than the old Source engine, which it used to originally power the Half-Life 2 style graphics. This is a genuinely very it's funny game. So I don't want to spoil too much for you, but uh, basically you control a character and you have a narrator, which you 
can decide to obey or disobey, and each time you make a choice in the game, it affects which ending that you get. Definitely make sure to check this one out. So next up, we're looking at Cyberpunk 2077. So no, at the time of recording, the Mac port has not been released. So that's why we're running this through the Windows translation layer, Crossover 25. If you want to find out how to do this yourself, then make sure to click on the tutorial link in the description. So it's my genuine hope that this is one of the last times I benchmark Windows Cyberpunk 2077 running on a Mac because the native port should render this kind of obsolete. We are running through multiple translation layers in order to get this to work, which is why the frame rate isn't that good. And we're actually forced to run this at low preset with FSR set to performance mode. And my hope is that the native port is going to get much better performance on these low end machines. Time will only tell, of course. Next, we're having a quick look at another Windows game, Horizon Zero Dawn, running at 1080p at the Faber Performance preset. So this is not the remastered version of the game. I'm running the original GOG version, which manages to run pretty decently at 35 to 45 FPS on these open world areas, which is where you're going to spend the majority of the game. Anyway, this is working great on a crossover 25. It's fixed many of the previous bugs that we had with sped up voices, and now it doesn't run too badly on a Mac. It's actually possible to boot up the sequel Horizon Forbidden West using Vladimir Prog's F16C patch. And although it's possible to get into game, it will actually crash after a few minutes. Hopefully we're going to get a fix on this in the future. Next up, we're looking at the Windows game Red Dead Redemption 2. So this is one of the big success stories of D3D Metal 2.1, which manages to fix a lot of performance issues with Red Dead Redemption 2 running on Mac. So here I've got the graphics settings set to basically low on everything, and I've set FSR onto balance mode, and I could probably squeeze a little bit more frame rate if I put it onto performance mode, but it's actually running okay as it is. Now there are bugs still with the rendering on this game with the shadows, but it's less pronounced in other areas of the game, especially when there's less snow. Now I wouldn't necessarily want to play this at 25 FPS, but considering that this is a fanless, passively called MacBook Air, and that we're very close to that 30 FPS mark that the game originally came out on PlayStation 4, then you might consider this playable. Next up, we are looking at Rocket League. So this used to have a Mac OS back in the day but it was deprecated and so we're forced to run the Windows version and it's actually working better than ever under D3D Metal 2.1. We're running at 1080p high quality settings with a controller and it basically works flawlessly and one good thing about Crossover 25 is the fact that you can install the Epic Games Store natively so no need for third-party launchers and that basically means that you can seamlessly get into this game from a Mac. Next we're looking at the Windows game The Witcher 3. Here we're running the DirectX 11 version using D3D Metal 2.1 but if we switch over to DXMT we can get a substantially better frame rate, improving by over 10 FPS. Just be aware that just like all the games on this list, this game will thermally throttle even running under DXMT, meaning performance will degrade over time. Now the performance under DXMT isn't too bad. I'm definitely going to be making a follow-up video demonstrating how to use the DXMT upscaler, which is really exciting technology. Lastly, we are looking at the game Repo. So this is an online multiplayer cooperative horror extraction looting games. So if you've played a game like Lethal Company, which also works through Crossover 25, then you might be familiar with this. So once again, we are running this game through DXMT rather than D3D Metal. And user reports have shown that it runs substantially faster through DXMT. So, and you might want to do this as well because DXMT does support the Steam overlay, whereas D3D Metal doesn't, which is going to be handy for joining those online multiplayer games. Anyway, that is my list of games running on the MacBook Air M4. If you want to request other games running on this MacBook Air, then please make sure to leave a comment. Maybe I'll do a part three. Anyway, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.